Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 12 of Exoria, a mod pack by DavQuest. So I wasn't planning on doing another episode of Exoria, but I wasn't ready for my time lapse and I figured that if I don't prepare uh, for the time lapse, then we're going to have a problem for tomorrow where we have our stream, which I'm confirming from 3 to potentially 5.30, we'll see how it goes. So today, I want to do some more progress. Last day, last episode, we progressed into building the first pet, the infusing life and infusing all of the life we needed. And we got stuck at egg came first because we need to get into embers. Then to be or not to be, we're now stuck at bee breeding. Let's just take one second. I want to show you what bees we've got and show you a setup that I did in my time lapse. I did this setup in the time lapse because it's very, very simple and I didn't want to waste any time. The obsidian is a three eat source. I put a crucible, I put a crucible inserter and I put seeds in here to create seed oil. And I have a setup to grab the seed oil. Oh, I had to fall, of course. And I have a setup to grab the seed oil, put it in a tank and then grab it and put it in this uh, bee house. Well, in this, uh, sorry, machine for bees. Here I have to put the fairy dust and using the fairy dust and the seed oil, I get these princess and I got all of these princess, which is really good because the first princess we need is the fairy queen. It's the only one that we can currently use. But to be honest, this whole thing I'm going to put aside and we're going to get back to in a later episode because this episode I have something way more interesting and important to do. So as part of our seeding in our production, in my time lapse, I grabbed all of the diamonds that I was producing and I now have 22 diamonds. So let me remove this dust, which I'm going to put in here. And let me remove all of these sieves because I want to sieve the dust to try and get my emerald, but I don't want, oh my God, where is this fire coming from? There's a fire noise. And I don't know where it's coming from. And it's really annoying. So it's somewhere around here, but I can't see it. I wonder if it's not the lava, but okay. So no idea. Hopefully it's not that loud for you guys. So sorry. So now I want to take all of this dust and all of this dust. I want to see with diamond because I really want to try and get my emerald. I really need my emerald this episode. Uh, so I have six. I could transform those six into that one emerald that we need. If I go back here, resource automation to that one emerald that we need. But I really want to do seven because seven is going to give me 10 like we proved last time. It's really the best ratio of all. Oh, I know what the noise is. It's this. It's the loam. Oh my God. It's the creation of charcoal. Okay, so I'm going to have to move this somewhere way else. Let's just see if I can lower the sound for something of this because this is crazy. I have no idea what's causing this. Maybe note blocks? Uh, no. So what else could it be? Like, I hate that the sounds are not really labeled as to amb ambient environment. That didn't seem to help much. Let's try that again. I don't know if you guys have any idea. You know what? Let's just lower the volume to 35 for now. It's not helping a lot, but it is a bit better. Okay. So today I want to get my uh, emerald, which means that I want, that's one. How many more do I need? I need one more little pile of emerald dust. Oh, come on. Just give it to me. I want it so bad. I want to be able to finish this right now. But the goal is to unlock this because I want to unlock the flexible tools. Like that's something that's really important. It's going to be like the biggest power spike improvement we can get at this point. It's the one thing that we've been driving toward as fast as possible. You know what? This always gets on fire. I wonder, no, ash block actually creates more fire. So that's not a good idea. I was wondering if I could put a block there to stop it. So still another pile of diamond dust. So what I want is to craft these tools today and I want to craft the 
the portal. So one thing I know for sure that we need to do, let's do that now. Oh, <laughs> let's grab our our stone to be able to teleport because that, that would be bad. Not having to walk all the way back here instead of teleporting. Don't want to do that. Okay, so here's my warp stone. And I'm not going to be harvesting any trees, so I can put that here. And let's just check one last time for the emerald, which we don't have. Okay, and let's go to a runic circle. I should probably do that at a later time when I'm explaining why we're doing this. Oh, this is annoying. This weird bug where you get stuck into a block. But I know that I'm going to need these uh, block. So I might as well, the same way that we grabbed some already for the infusing machine, I know that I need some more for the portal. The only reason I know is that I've already been down this road in my other playthrough. Like I said, I'm trying to get you to the to progressing as fast as possible. So I already know I need those. And if I had played this well, honestly, when I was visiting, I would have emptied my inventory and I would have made sure to grab all of these as I came here. Since the bones are here, let's just grab the bone because at some point we're going to need all of the rotten flesh that we can get. And the only way we have of getting rotten flesh right now is those bones. And that gave me only two, so not a great success. So let's go back home and let's check. Let's just get rid of a couple of things. Bone, flesh, uh, what else? So here I have chiseled, so let's get rid of the chisel. Let's keep these runestone brick. And let's keep these runestone for now because that's what we're going to need. Let's take a quick look here to see if we finally know. Still not the crazy emerald. So one thing I need to talk to you about, guys, because I'm getting to a dangerous point. What I mean by that is food. I'm at 36% carb and 36% fat. And whenever one of those, I think, goes below 30, then I get into a negative and I get a poison debuff which is really not pleasant. So one of the things that I wanted to do is come right here, break this and put some potato down because I really need to get some potato. I, I'm pretty sure that potato counts as carbs. Oops, let's grab this. Let's go fill the water can. We're gonna check immediately if that counts as carb. Oh, that's all the water there is in there. Is it broken again? No, okay. So it's just slowly transforming. Wow. But that should be enough to grab my potatoes. So let's go back and let's make some potatoes happen. Hello. It feels like... Oh, it, it is working. It just doesn't look like it's working. I hate that there isn't a particle effect. I think it's because I turned my particle down. But here's a potato and we can check. Yes, carbs, 0.5%. I think that if I cook this, oh, carbs, 2.5%. So that's way better. So let's just cook this one. I'm going to need to make way more potatoes. And the next one, I'm going to transform. I'm going to plant again for sure because we really need it. But for now, I just need the carbs. So let's just cook that one quickly. And let's check if we have our seventh. Uh, two. Wow, finally. That's what I wanted. So let's put like this like that. And let's make a seventh emerald dust. Uh, really, I had to put it in the only one that I don't have any cooking material. Perfect. And while we're at it, do I have cobblestone any place close? I want a stack of cobblestone because I'd like to start cooking it into stone. Like, I've been kind of derelict in that, that I need to start making cobblestone. Okay, so now that I have this, if I look at my food, I'm at 35% carb. If I eat this and I look again, I'm now at 38% carbs. So I'm going to need some fat soon. And fat means animals. That's why I'm trying to get to animals as soon as possible. Let's just do this, come back here, and back here we're going to start the seven emerald dust. And you know what, I'm going to wait for one emerald because that's going to complete the quest. And by completing my quest, I'm going to be able to get to the next step. That is a bit long. Okay, perfect. So first emerald, which should 
complete the quest and this unlocked a lot of things it unlocked all of this aoe boring and uh it also unlocked here rubber if i remember correctly so it unlocked the most important part which is to be able to go down runestone brick so going down now that i'm pretty sure i've depleted all the resources i can get from this planet surface i need to explore the depth of this planet the lower levels are scary i should keep lights all around it seems that i can't get lower than that but i found some info about to get further down into the caverns a portal made out of the runestone i found activated with all the gems with magic properties combined allows me to explore the cavern of this planet so we need 10 runestone brick no this is ash block not gonna work so this six ten we need ten runestone brick like this and now we need an exoria an exoria gem an exoria gem we can look it up in a moment but basically an exoria gem is a gem which uses one of each of those i'm gonna go take them from this chest here because it's going to be easier to grab one of each one one two three four five six seven eight well i think there's one of those that it doesn't use i just don't know which one yet let me grab all of this i've been kind of neglecting my metal production so i have to make sure to try and continue taking care of that so it doesn't overfill and the reason i want to get in another time lapse so soon is well i want to do a stream every week and i want to continue streaming exoria for now but it's because i also really need to automate things if i don't automate things i'm going to have a problem so let's go to our crafting table right here and look and search for oh a little lag spike search for this exoria so this exoria artifact is made out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the nine of the eight gem plus an emerald. So that's done. So the only one it doesn't use is the Ender Amet Amethyst. Let's just put that with the others right here. Like so. Perfect. And now we have an Exoria artifact and a runestone brick. Which lets us build a portal. I want to put this portal back here for now. It's not going to be the final position. But for now, this is where I'm going to put it. I just want to put it and uh, generate it. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Let's make a ash block right here so that we can reach across like this. One, two. Grab this ash again. And now you use the Exoria artifact on it and you generate a portal. But we're not going to go through it right now. Yes, I'm being a tease. But it is really important. Before we go, we need to check a couple of things and we need to prepare. Like I've told you guys, I'm here to try and show you the fastest and best way to get things done. So I would be remiss if I didn't find the best way and teach you the best way of getting things done. I just want to see how many of those I have to see if I can start more diamonds. Because we're, we need a lot of diamonds right now. Because two things. One, we want all of these mesh to be diamond mesh but also because we have tools to build. So let's just throw that back in here. And you know what, let's throw that back in here also for now. Okay, so the thing that we need to do before that, I need being flexible. Better tools are now in order, especially some that are repairable. I investigated some of the material I got from sieving and some might work. So it wants us to create a flexible pickaxe, a flexible axe, a flexible shovel and a flexible sword. And yes, the texture is broken and it's been broken since the beginning and I have a bad feeling that it's not going to get corrected. So let's just search flexible. So for flexible, we're going to need diamond tools. So we're going to need a diamond pickaxe, which is four flake diamond and these little iron pin, which are easy to make. We'll discuss them later. We're going to need a flexible axe, which is three. So now we need four, five, six, seven. For the shovel, we need a diamond shovel, which is three also, which is 10. And we want to make the sword, and the sword is with a diamond axe, which is one, two, three. So we need four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we need 13 diamond flake. Not only, uh, sorry, I, this, that's the one I wanted to count. Not only that, we're going to need one tungsten plate, 
two three tungsten plate, four five six tungsten plate, seven tungsten plate. Now, what are tungsten plate? Well, it's easy. Here, oh wow, I got ten. I'm so lucky. So I'm going to show you how we get tungsten. We get tungsten from sieving. Oh, sorry. We get tungsten from sieving with a diamond mesh some ash block. So just by having these two diamond mesh and sieving the ash block, we got seven. Now I'm going to put these seven right here. Ooh, I was doing some quick climbing here. I'm going to put the seven here to cook so that I can get some ingot. And then you guys know what we can do with ingot. We can use a hammer and we can hammer those into plate. So I'm going to grab this. I'm also going to grab the iron clipper because we're going to need it for something. So let's come back here. And this is going to take a while to cook. While it takes a while to cook, let's look at the other things we need to prepare. So the other things we need to prepare are these obsidian rod. We need four of them. One, two, three, and four. And these obsidian rod are made with a burnium dust, a burnium, and two pulverized obsidian. Ooh, I don't know if I have enough pulverized obsidian. I have set, oh, I am missing one pulverized obsidian. How do I get the pulverized obsidian again? By sieving ash. <sighs> so I'm going to make everything but the sword for now. There's, and there's a good reason for that. So let's grab four burnium crystal back here and our gems should be finished. Yes. So, oh, that's only nine. No, I, oh, I, I took one already. Derp. Please, please ignore my last comment. That was dumb. So I'm going to take these four and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make, unfortunately, only three of these tool rod for now, but soon it's going to be seven. So let's do these three, uh, not seven, four. And I'm going to keep that because I'm going to start ash next. The moment the dust is finished, let me just check where my dust is at. This is empty and if I look at this, there's still, uh, there's still fairly um, a lot of dust to be done. So we're going to let that continue. We have our tungsten ingot, which means we can do our plate. So let's transform. Okay. <laughs> I guess I need another hammer. I didn't think it was going to be, oh, I have one right here. So I don't even need to create another one, but that was kind of funny. I thought it would last for what I needed to do. So that's going to be my seven plates. And it means that I just need the flake diamond now. So let's come here and let's, same technique as last time, do it slowly. That's one. So one for one, one for two. Oh, this is boring. Two for three, three for four, four for five. Five for six, five for seven, six for eight. I am not being lucky on this time. Seven for nine, uh, seven for nine, maybe on this side. Eight for 10. So nine, I just wanna make sure I'm not making too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13. So I really do need 13. So 10. Oh, this is all of my diamond. I hate the randomness. 12 and 13. Okay, so let's stop the nightmare right here. Okay, so the last thing that we need is these little iron pin that you do by using clippers on iron strands, which means we need one iron ingot. If I can find, do I have, yeah, I still have a lot. So let's do that one, like so. Where's my hammer? Let's transform that into a plate. Perfect, and we're going to clip this plate with the clippers. And now we're going to clip two of those for four pin, perfect. Now let's put that back in here, that in here, that in here. And now we should be able to make some tools. So let's make a diamond pickaxe. Well, that's one, let's be careful. Flexible axe, those we need two. One, two. Now we need an, a shovel, so that's a shovel. 
And now that we have the tools, we can do this. So now let's do a flexible pickaxe. Let's do a flexible axe. And let's do a flexible, flexible shovel. Now, why is this important? Well, let me show you, my friends, why it's important. I'm going to need this right here. And I'm going to show you the best thing in this game, like the, the thing you wanted to get to since the beginning, because this is going to be literally game changer. So let's go. Come on. Give me some rice. Wow, this just this stuff just doesn't want to grow. Come on, how many? Four. So four is literally only two, unfortunately. And I'm out of water. I need to go refill this. This watering can is really not good. You know what? Let me take a different approach. I think I'm just being dumb here. Let's grab four bones worth of bone meal. And I think that's going to give me a better result. I think we're going to hopefully not use more than two bone meal per. And we're going to be able to get the rice that we want. Because what we're going for right now is this these little rice ball. We need nine of these little rice balls. And that was actually a tip and trick from Rahi Rafib Rahi or oh god. I I'm, I'm really butchering your name. I'm really sorry about that. But that was another one of the great tip and trick. I'm just not using it for what he wanted us to use it. And I'm going to tell you in the tip and trick what he wanted us to build because it's something that I'm going to work toward in my time lapse. It's something I'm going to do in the time lapse for sure. So here's my bone meal. Let's go back here and see what we can do with that. So, oh, three, really? Oh, sometimes it's only two. This one's three and I'm out already. And that's going to give me 12 more. So 12 is going to be three sets, unfortunately. That's not as much as I would have wanted, but it's better than nothing. So let's put that back here. Let's get rid of this rice right here. Is there anything I can get rid of also? The sweet and these rice seed and the wheat. Yeah, there's still space here. Let's put that here. Okay, so now let's grab some water. So we're going to do bucket of water. And what you do is you use this rice dough like this. And you put a bucket of water in the center. And you get four rice ball each. But now I only have eight. That's not enough. Let's go back here. That's going to give us 12. And we're going to do the last, even though we're not going to be able to transform it. But this last set is going to give us... Uh, for 16 and now I can use these 16 together to make a slime block that's important because the flexible axe pick is made with three flexible tool and a slime block so now I can make this tool and this my friend is the ultimate tool look at this oak wood let's put an oak wood here let's break it with this iron axe and we got four, which was a great upgrade if you remember. It was going from two to four. Let's use the flexible axe pick vol. 14. This one gave us 10. Not four, 10. Now let's do the, oh, I already had some stick. Let me get rid of the stick so I can make the example good. So if I use this axe, I went from two to four stick, but if I use the flexible axe pick vol, another 10. So it is basically two and a half time the resource from an iron axe. And this has so much durability, it's crazy. And it can be fixed. Uh, I, I think it's with obsidian, let me just check. So if I put this here with obsidian here, yeah. So you fix it with obsidian, see? One obsidian and it's fixed. I know it does cost a lot of obsidian though. So if it looked like it was super good on the obsidian, it's not really. Like once you really damage it a lot, you need a lot of obsidian to repair it. So much so that at some point we're going to have to make a setup 
an in-world setup to be able to generate obsidian because we're going to need a lot of obsidian and it's kind of simple to do we've already i've already shown you that we could break obsidian with the uh, block breaker so it's basically using the block breaker and having something that puts a source block in the world and from the source block um sorry puts a source block in the world and have water always flowing on it so you put the lava in the world and since the water is always flowing on it it's generating obsidian and the the other thing breaks it okay so this is finished now that this is finished i can look at how much of everything else i have and i'm just going to restart some ash if i still i don't know if i have any ash left honestly that might be the problem 22 here none here 16 here oh this is a lot of ash and let's just grab this also and another 40 right here sorry right here and another eight right here i'm gonna put everything that i can because i want to try and get my other what's that called my other tongues uh, not tungsten my other pulverized obsidian so all of this perfect so let's go right here and put no this is basalt it's only these 40 ash block but if we're lucky it should give us everything that we want so let's just push Ooh, how many diamonds do i have seven yes i have another recipe of diamonds so let's get those started right now when we're going to look at the next quest let's put this right here and let's look so now we didn't complete the sword so this quest is not completed but at least we have this tool and by the way this tool it breaks everything it's a diamond level pickaxe so see it's progressing and i'm pretty sure it's going to break Et voila, and the obsidian is back so it will let us harvest anything we want so technically i don't need this pickaxe anymore and I don't need this iron axe anymore because I'm always going to be using this now. Okay, so the next step. The next step. We do have the Exoria Underground to go to. And the reason I was waiting is that I wanted this tool. Because there are things that we cannot harvest in the Exoria Underground. Let me grab these sticks and let me grab some wood because to go in the Exoria underground we're going to want a couple of things first we're going to want 64 torches because it is a dangerous place and there's no way i'm going there without 64 torches so let's make some unlit torch so unlit torches we're going to craft how many do i have i have 18 and you know what let's just make 60 just question of being simpler and let's light these up and now we have 64 plus 14 okay let's go and put the charcoal back in here i can move the stone at the same time put the stone back in here and now i want a lot of stick because one of the thing that i want is ladders and this is very important i'm getting to something i'm going to explain everything to you guys it's always one of those things where I don't know if it's better to explain everything before where nothing makes sense because there's too many steps or if it's better to wait once we have all the steps. So now these sticks I'm going to use to make ladder. So I want at least two stack of ladders. So that's going to be... Wow! One stacks only. And the beauty of this is that we can go like this, like this, and then balance grid and oh that's one stack and a half so that's not even enough i'm going to transform all of this also it's so much faster and the quantity of resource that we get is just amazing like you guys have to admit that this is really a game changer the ability of getting so much resource Sorry, I had to cut the sound because I had one really bad case of the sneezing. Don't know where it came from, so sorry. So we're going to need to be able to travel up in a quick and easy manner. So this is all done. I don't need this anymore. 
I uh, do I did I get my my missing obsidian? Oh yes, perfect. So let's make the axe. Uh, not the axe, the um, sword. Because let's be honest, the the sword is going to be a good thing to get once we go in the underground. So now we can make this last one. So now we can make this sword, which does work. It's super weird, but it does work, and it does do 7.5 attack damage. So it's really not a bad sword. So let's put the sword here, let's put the torch here, let's put this here, and we're kind of ready to go. So let's get rid of this, get rid of this. I'm missing only one thing, and that's what I'm searching for right now. It's a waystone. I'm pretty sure I grabbed the waystone at some point. Oi. So I was pretty sure I had a waystone, so I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the closest runic circle. And that is not the closest runic circle. The reason I want to go to the closest runic circle is that the closest rune circle is easy to get to. I can... Uh, this is annoying. Okay, perfect. So it is the closest, so it's going to be the easiest for me to get back to here. So I don't mind breaking this and taking it, because if I need to come back here, well, it's not that far to travel to here, and I'll be able to come back. So let's go to the home. Oh, wait, 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 I have an idea. Let me go here to home portal. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So there's really, oh my God. Two in a row. Usually you can get unstuck, but not these two. So sorry. So what I was saying is that usually these own portal, once we have one, we really don't need more than one. But these infinite mana pool are really useful. So let's grab this waystone and this infinite mana pool. And the portal itself will leave here because like we honestly don't care about it. But at least we know it's here. So let's go home again now. And now we can get rid of a couple of things. So I'm, I don't need this. I don't need this. I only need one waystone, I don't need this, I don't need the ash, I have some torches, I have my sword, I have some ladders, so I'm all ready to go. So the reason we want all of this, I'm going to explain right now, because this is something frustrating. If you guys are, oh and the quest is done, if you guys are playing this, you're going to go there and harvest a couple of things, and first thing you know you're going to come back here and then you're going to figure, oh, I need it for a lot of things. So basically, this is AoE. AoE is the Ammer, Ammer Crafting Table. And the Ammer Crafting Table is something that we want. We need four stone, four crafting table, but we need a Tinker's Hammer. And a Tinker's Hammer needs Sarsen, Sarsen or Sarsen Stone. Sarsen Stone is found in the Exoria Underground with a 49% chance, but when you're at Y187. So we're going to have to either ladder down or ladder up until we get to this Y to get some Sarsen stone and we need three. Now while we're at it, if we're looking, we know that the next step is Ember and it says Boring. So the first time I searched this, I searched for Boar. And there is an Ember Boar, which I know exists. And the Ember Boar needs a mechanical core and it basically needs two mechanical core the way it works. And mechanical core requires archaic circuit which means archaic brick. So archaic brick is either made with a alchemy uh, exchange table tablet, which we can't build until we have these things, or it's made by killing golem. So if we do find golem, we're going to want to kill until we get at least eight archaic brick. And oh, we're gonna need some more diamonds and kamenite bricks and kamenites is made from Kamenite blend, which is sulfur, clay, and dust pile. So super simple to make. This is not going to be an issue for us. Just by looking at this, we already have enough of everything that we need. So I think it's time. Let's go and travel to the new dimension. Now I am traveling. My screen is frozen. And then if you look at the top left, it says waiting for server. Whatever I do here won't matter because it won't stay like this. Like this block will reappear because right now I'm teleporting. It's just that it's generating the new, um, the new area. And 
we're just stuck here until this happens. It takes a while because basically it's generating a whole other realm. And it's not as efficient as the nether. Nether creation doesn't take as long as that, but we have to wait. That's that's all there is to it. So you can even travel. Like I can do whatever I want. And I can see the door won't open because we're waiting for server. We're not able to go anywhere, open any chest. We're basically just waiting to be teleported to this new region. We can travel around, but nothing's moving, nothing's happening. And when it finally does work, see, even the fairies, they're stuck in their place. We're just like completely stuck. And this, as you can see, can take up to a minute or two. So first thing we do, let's place down the torch and let's light and make sure there's no mob around. Okay, there's no mob here, and wow, this is honestly really unlucky. Huh, I don't know what to say. Just a small little cavern like this? Well, at least one quest completed, but that is kind of sad because we're going to have a lot of digging to do. So what I want to do right now is... I need the sarsen stone because I want to get the new tool. So what I'm going to do... Oh, it's still loading. For a little while, it's going to be like this while it's loading. So I just want to be able to make a little area right here. And I'm going to put this waste stone right here and call this Exoria Underground. Ground. And turn it on. Don't forget to turn it on. So now technically we can travel from here to home whenever we want. And now we can just start going up and digging our way. Oh, Ornblende Dolum is like super hard to break. If I didn't have a um, diamond pickaxe, I wouldn't be able to break it. Oh, I should have stayed down. It wasn't broken yet. So this is broken and you can get on top of the ladder like this. So this is a trick that you guys need to learn. Stand on top of your ladder because it breaks block faster. If you're in the ladder, it doesn't quite break as fast and there is a risk of lava so ideally you don't want to stand exactly on top of the block you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to put block next so that if ever there's a problem and there's lava well i can place a block quickly so this is just going to be painful because we're at y40 and sarsen stone if you remember well i'm going to break this block and once this block is broken, I'm going to show you Sarzen. Sarzen stone appears first at 127. So before block 127, there's there's no point of even searching or investigating for this. It, there's not going to be any. Oh, block lag is the worst. I wonder if I should just restart. Oh, that block reappeared, but the one under was still broken. Okay, so this is the weirdest block lag ever. So this is my way. I usually build up to a torch, and now I can go break this one. This is the next I can reach. And once this is done, I just start setting up ladder. And you can old shift to old in place, by the way. So I go up here, put another torch, stand on top of my ladder and then I continue just building like just digging up upward bluestone now bluestone I don't know if there's a use no basalt bluestone is there use for bluestone so bluestone can transform into runestone with a pure daisy so if we ever run out of runestone that could be a thing ornblende idolum I think has no use whatsoever no nope. sandy dirt Sandy dirt as <clears throat> coarse sandy dirt. It really has no use of its own. And ortho stone, ortho stone, smooth, smooth. Oh, the kiln brick. Okay, so when we want to make a kiln, we're going to need ortho stone. So kiln, if you know the recipe, needs eight block. So we need four recipe of this. So f we need at least 16 ortho stone. So if we ever see ortho stone as we go up, we're going to notice where it is because we're going to grab at least 16 of it. So like I said, you just do this and climb up. And I want to climb up even though this is a bit boring and I'm sorry about it. But I need to at least have my... 
I need to at least have my three sarsen stone. Because if I don't have my three sarsen stone, I can't craft the next part. If I can't craft the next part, I... Wow, this is really freaking stupid. What the heck is going on? Okay, at least that worked. So now, like I said, the next one that I can reach is this one. So I'm going to break this one. And now let's just tunnel up with the stairs. I got stuck for whatever reason. Put a torch and continue up. And you always basically want the torch as close as possible because don't forget, there's still the Gru. You still need to survive the Gru. So there's no getting off of it. You need the torches. That's why I made at least a stack. And we just need to continue tunneling up like this. We've only gone 10 block up, but I don't know if I'm just getting unlucky with the block breaking, having to re-break all the time. And that is literally way more annoying than I ever thought possible. Oh my god, I, I would have thought that by now it was over. This world should be loaded. I have no clue what's happening. And, you know, these things other YouTuber cut by just going into a time lapse and just being back, hey guys, I'm back and everything's great and everything's peachy. But I don't cut because these are all things that do happen to you and that you have to power through. Now, if you guys have any tips and tricks on how to stop that or how to fix it, I'm more than welcome. But I know for a fact that I have a very, very powerful computer and I have a TI 1050 as a graphic card. So it might not be the strongest graphic card that exists, but it's strong enough that I should not be having these problem. And we are also honestly unlucky because we're getting a lot of Orn Blende Edolium. In my other playthrough, first of all, I was in a bigger cavern. And from the bigger cavern, I was able to go like to at least 80 high. I didn't set up my base in the same place. And that was on purpose. I didn't want to be exactly in the same place because I didn't want to know exactly where everywhere I was going and everywhere I was appearing. Ooh, Sinus Clay Clump. So Sinus Clay is also something that we want. If we find Sinus Clay, we want to grab it because Sinus Clay is used to make, what is it again? Sinus Clay is used to make these Sinus Cota brick. And the Sinus Cota brick is what you use to make Coke brick for the, uh, for, oh, I didn't want to fall. For the um, uh, the steel production that we're going to want to get into later. So again, whenever you see that, grab that. So Sinus Clay, whenever you find some, always grab. Always, always, always. And uh, like I said, the Arto Stone. There's a couple of things like this that once you're playing true, and that's one of the things that I kind of deplore, is that when you're playing true, you don't know about this and you pass them along and you don't pick up these things. And then later on you find a quest and these quests requires it. And first thing you know, you have to go back and start searching for all of these things again. Ooh, wow. Did you see how much faster this is when you're having easy block instead of orn blend a something? So let's just continue going up. We're already at 64. So we, we struggled to get 10 high and now in one short little lap of time, we went, oh, don't forget the torch. I almost forgot the torch. So in a little lap of time, we went up by 20. So hopefully we're going to be, oh, I see that. And we get the next Orn Blende Dolem. And it's one, so it's only that one, the hardest one that reappears. That's really weird. Did the Orny Blend Dolem reappear in a lower place? Because if so, that is the weirdest behavior ever. It seems that when you break it, it just appears one block down. Really? Okay, so I, I'm i a programmer by trade. I don't even understand how this kind of bug is possible. You break a block in a position, and instead of reappearing in the same position, it reappears in a lower position. Like... I don't even understand how by code this is possible. Anyway, at least, yeah, bluestone, bluestone. At least we're back to easy again. 
and that was another set and we basically just need to get to 127 and then hope to get lucky because that's where the sarsen stone starts appearing sarsen sarsen the problem with these things you never know how they're really named uh, i'm not like first of all english is not my first language and second of all i don't um i don't know the phonetic alphabet language there's basically an alphabet that exists out there that shows you how to pronounce words by sound which is kind of amazing but at the same time if you want my opinion green schism i can tell you that green sh uh, schist is not useful it's it, there's nothing to be done with that so what i've always found funny is that if there is an alphabet or a way of writing these word in phonetic alf alphabet that means that someone that knows the phonetic alphabet can always pronounce the word even though they have no idea what the word is then why not just write the word that way like wouldn't that be a smartest thing to actually write the word in a way that everyone that reads it can read it uh, can pronounce it properly like that's just one of those things that as a programmer and as a guy of science that so makes so much sense that it's hard to believe that people just didn't care and started writing words with different letters and saying it's basically this you invent a word and it's let's say it's t-o-t-o toto and you say no no it's actually to two and like why like where did that come from why did you decide on that pronunciation when everyone knows that t-o and t-o does two so it should be two two or toto if you want the sound o as an absolute but never should it be toe too. Like it's just one of those things that have always annoyed me about language. I think it's literally one, that in exceptions is the two things that pushed me towards science instead of language, art, and those kind of stuff. Like there's no logic to it. It's hard for me to understand. So I'm like, well, if I can't make any logical sense out of it, well, too bad. I say that about music, but let's be honest. Music is just that I wasn't good enough uh to like i didn't have the skill to be able to learn playing an instrument i did try but i wasn't able to because music is logical there are notes and you have to reproduce the notes and it's very precise and the beauty of music and its preciseness is that you make one mistake and one song can be horrible you can go through a passage of a song that's just majestic and incredible and you screw up one note and instead of having like a good sound in a good um in a good song overall you have a dissonant weird thing that no one likes and some might be even as bad as like making your ears hurt so there's no logic behind that oh my god 120 we're almost there this i'm sorry this is literally way too long but this is absolutely the experience you're going to get I could have tried to dig around and get to a cavern, but let's be honest, my chance of finding a cavern that goes up is way less than actually just going up and trying. <gasps> sarsene stone! Yes! One sarsene stone! I just need two more. One more. Okay, let's go up, let's go up, let's go up. That's another sarsene stone. That's a fourth one. Oh, I already have my three. So technically I could leave here, but I'm going to grab whatever I can because I'm here. Might as well. So this, let's go up and I think it's all sarsene stone. Yes. Oh, uh, this is so beautiful. Okay. So I'll be honest with you guys. I said I was luckier in the other playthrough because I found a cavern that brought me to like I think it brought me to level 95 and then I just had to dig up but in all honesty this was also very lucky I basically just dug up from my portal and I ended up getting all of this sarsine stone sarsen sarsine whatever so I'm gonna grab whatever's around here and here and here and I really want to end the episode but we have a little bit more crafting to do so I'm just going to finish grabbing those. I want 32. Once I have 32, we're going to leave here. And leaving here is going to be very easy. That's why you guys use Waystone. Always, always use Waystone. 
because with the waist down, we're just going to be able to teleport back and we're going to be back home in a moment. Now, when we come back here, we're going to have to continue digging. We're going to have to climb up. So it's going to take a while, but it's it's better than what we have right now that of having to like travel all the way back. Uh, one thing we could do is set up another waystone, but I'm not sure of how appropriate that is. So let's teleport back home and it works across dimension. So that's always amazing. And let's craft the last little element that I wanted. So let's ignore everything here. Let's just get to the crafting immediately. So we want to make a hammer crafting table. Hammer crafting table. So we need a tinker hammer. Let's go and make a tinker hammer. Hello. Oh. Tinker hammer, like so. And now we need some crafting tables. So this right here, this right here, this right here. We need these. So one, we need four. So we need eight of these one, seven, eight. From these eight, we can make four of these. One, two, three, four. Oh, just three. Really, I'm out of stick. Of all of the things to be out of, sometimes it's just crazy. Now that we can make 10 at a time, literally in my time lapse, I'm going to make four or five stack of stick and four or five stack of plank so that we don't have that problem anymore. So let's just make the last crafting stage. Oh, did I really just see? It can literally be made with crafting tables. Dur -er. So let's make the twice as expensive one and we keep the tinker hammer and we now have this new thing to put down and it has a hammer crafting table and this is amazing. That's why I wanted to get to because I figured out in my other time lapse that I made my first stream way too soon. Let's do this and you can create two hammer. First you can make the this armor, which is called, what is it called? There's no name. Okay, let's make one of these and let's make five of these. And you know what? Let's make as many as I can, six of these. And I'm gonna show you why, but this is the game changer. This is when you play this game where things starts getting pleasant because things are not as painful or as awkward as they were before. This is what we want. This is what we want. And I kept this. I kept these ladders because I'm going to set up a set of ladders to go up right here in a moment. So let's go outside and I want to show you this. I never finished this ladder setup. If you remember, I've been digging this side of the mountain and it's been super painful. Well, painful no longer because the stone excavator is a three by three excavator. Look at this. Look at how much easier and simpler everything is now. Oh no, I broke my base. Derp. Okay, so I'm going to have to take care of that in the time lapse also. And the reason I'm closing it ASAP is that it means that I cannot, um, my machines do not work, my metal do not melt while this is open. But basically this whole place that has been so annoying to me, this whole facade of the mountain that I wanna get rid of, now it's as simple as this. It's literally just plowing through this and the durability on this is quite good to be honest. Like, let's be fair. You've seen how much ash I've already harvested. This would have literally taken me 10 times the times, well, nine times the time that this just took me. Wow, look at this, it's just crazy. So now keeping my sea full of ash won't be a problem. Digging the rest of my base out won't be a problem. This is like, this is where the difference happened. This is where one of the big difference in the game happened and you start having way more fun playing because nothing is a shovel chore where you're just using a shovel and you have to struggle so much like just let's finish this right here just being able oh 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 basalt we have a stone hammer so now for the basalt we just use the stone hammer instead 
Like, this is how easier this all is. Now, I can just go like this with either the hammer when it's a harder resource or the stone excavator when it's a softer resource. And it's as easy as that. Well, this I wasn't expecting to go in here. It's because if when I harvest this, um, when I break this down, I'm going to have to stop this. So let's put the ash in here. K and K and K again. But this is, like I said, this is the start of the difference. Now, instead of my two hour time lapse, where I was barely able to open this room, where I struggled, I'll be able to completely open the rest of this base in the next time lapse. And instead of being a, a three by two, I'll be able to make this a three by three, even a four by four. Um, I'm not sure that I want to invest so much time going in here because of the basalt. The basalt is, in all honesty, useless. There's nothing for us to do with basalt other than using it as a crafting material. So I'm not sure that there's any point of us fighting to go deeper down that way. So once I'm three deep, I might just go this way. And once this way doesn't work, I might go the other way. The other thing that I discovered in my other playthrough, this was taking forever and it was not really working well. Well, there's two things I discovered with these auto clicker. These auto clickers can go up to three far or even four far. Do you see these are vested? How are they are vested? They are vested because this block just goes and click in front. The problem is that it doesn't click the next block if the front block is partially grown. So here's an example. Here, this potato is partially grown. These would never harvest. But if this is like this, the block clicker will go click. Oh, it's not partially grown. Click, not partially grown, click. The second that one of them grows though, it stops clicking. Like it's kind of weird. I can't really explain it. But that's how it seems to work. So one of the things I want to do in my time lapse, I want to move my farm somewhere else because honestly, if I want to move outward this way, I'm going to need to take this out of the way. And second thing I wanted to tell you guys, this roof, I built it so that I could get to my farm under the rain, but it's not a good idea. Here's why. It's not a good idea because I cannot prove this. Like I haven't found any thing I didn't look in the code I didn't find any proof of what I'm saying but I moved my farm and I made it open to the sky and since my farm has been open oh, of course of course you're going to give me rain right now when I'm trying to explain something so the moment that my farm was open to the sky I started getting way more resources start things started growing way faster so I would really recommend that you do not put your farm under a roof. I would just, oh, I just left. The sleep didn't, did I miss something? Did I get out of bed too? Oh, okay. I never finished sleeping. So let's wait till I'm not hurt anymore. And let's sleep and let's sleep the whole night because I want to get rid of the rain. I was like, why is there still rain? And now the rain's gone. Okay, so literally the moment that I took the roof, like I moved the farm to somewhere, there was no roof. My resources started producing way more often. So that's why I'm trying to do this right here because I do have my auto clicker. So technically I should be able to get way more resources from this. Uh, the other problem, as you've noticed, is I am not collecting those resources. So for sure, you do not get a lot of resource when you do not collect the resources. That That's just it's one of those things that everyone should agree with. <laughs> so one of the things that I have to do in my time lapse again is to actually put my um, put my vacuum hopper. So I want to rearrange my farm, maybe somewhere else, maybe differently. And I don't want to have that much wheat. I'm just going to break all of the wheat, but I'm going to set things up so that I have more of all the resources. I want the potatoes. I want the carrots. I even want the uh, pumpkins and the pumpkins. I have to figure out if pumpkins work. So basically, if you look at this, you can 
left click or right click. So I think I can use it to break pumpkin. I'm not 100% sure. In worst case scenario, pumpkin could still be manual. The reason I want pumpkins is that pumpkin can be transformed into pumpkin seeds and pumpkin seeds can be transformed into seed oil. And if we want to take a, a whack at the bees, we're going to need the seed oil. So I'm going to end this episode here, but now I feel confident that I'm ready for my time lapse. And I swear that by the end of the next time lapse, we will have something automated. We will have either the sieve here automated or we will have this right here automated. Oh, I made the same mistake. Okay, so I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to automate this place because this these resources are really important. They're my metal source. So if this is not working, then I have a metal. Ah, oh, really? Just, I, I need, I need this fix. So this is going to have to be the first thing that I address uh, when I come out, uh, when I start my time lapse. Because if I don't address this, I might lose these resources. Now I was lucky enough that they didn't despawn, but the problem is that they might despawn. And if they despawn, then it's a pure complete loss of the resources. So I'm going to take care of that in the time lapse for sure. And once this part is automated, once the, sorry, once the metal part, oh, already? Once the metal part is automated, the next part is going to be automating the, um, the sieves. Absolutely the sieves. And you know what? Grab all of this. What else can I move out of here? There's really, oh, wow. There's nothing I can move out of here. So I'm pretty sure all of you can agree that right now this is a really big problem because I'm not producing any resources because everything's getting stuck. And not only am I pro not producing any resources, I'm running the risk of losing resources. So that is really something that needs to be taken care of in my time lapse. I wanted to do it in the first time lapse where I really screwed up is that I really underestimated the work that was going to come from digging the base with shovel. That's why I wanted this week to rush two episodes of Exoria to get to this armor crafting table and be able to get things rolling. So let me get rid of this. You know what? I don't need to do this. I'll do this in my next episode in the time lapse. But you guys know where I'm going with this. I hope to see some of you in the stream uh, tomorrow. But uh, we have a lot of work to do. And hopefully when we come back, we'll have a more automated base and a nicer base. Guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.